When I, um, like you, was born, I donned a space suit for living on this plane. And uh, it was this body. This is my space suit. And it had a steering mechanism, my prefrontal lobes, and all the brain motors coordinating stuff. And just like those Rusty Schweiger and the others that go to the moon and they wear their uniforms and they learn how to grab things and lift things. So I did that. You know, I learned my prehensile capacities. And I got rewarded. I get, you get little stars and kisses and all kinds of things when you learn how to use your spacesuit. And you get really good at it. You get so good at using your spacesuit that you can't differentiate yourself from your spacesuit anymore. You think you're your spacesuit. And everybody comes up and says, What a nice suit. <laughs> and you're constantly looking into other people's eyes to find out if you're really wearing a nice spacesuit. It's what I call somebody training. That when you're born, you go into somebody training because your parents know who they are and they're going to make you somebody too. My parents were very intent on making me somebody. They wanted me to achieve, uh, be responsible, be healthy, um, be successful, bring pride to them. And if it didn't interfere with any of those, I should be happy. <laughs> the problem that I experienced, though, was that the suit that I was wearing, it was like you're in a, one of these suits that doesn't quite fit, and you're a little uncomfortable, and you're constantly trying to readjust yourself. The suit didn't fit, but everybody kept saying, beautiful suit, really impressive suit. You must be very happy. But I wasn't. Now, if everybody you look into their eyes and they tell you you're happy and you're not, because the suit feels so weird. What do you conclude? It's like those experiments in psychology where they have a group in a room and they have, it's all done, all the group are plants except for one person. And they show two lines in which one was shorter than the other and everybody in the room says that the shorter one is longer. And then they ask this other person, the poor sucker who's the subject, is that sh longer or shorter? And about 90% of the time, the person gives in to the rest of the group, even though it's obvious that the line is shorter than the other one. Because if you don't, you're so deviant. And who wants to be deviant? My God, life's hard enough. Coping. <laughs> so... I felt when everybody said what a nice suit I was wearing that I must be sick. So I went to an analyst. Now he was wearing another kind of weird suit. See? <laughs> and what he did was he said that for a pittance he would teach me how to wear his suit instead of my suit, you see. <laughs> so So I learned how to wear his suit, which had even more status connect. I mean, more people said beautiful suit. Part of learning how to wear that suit was you didn't see people anymore. You just saw psychosexual stages of development. You saw <laughs> anal retentives and early phallics and things like that. And I really wasn't very happy in that suit either. In that suit, I was a therapist, and I really needed to be a therapist. 
because I was so identified with my needs at that point that everybody else had to be a potential patient. So, and if you wouldn't be my patient, I didn't have much use for you because I needed to be a therapist full time. So that suit felt weird as well. Well then, um, through the um, kindness of a rather wild Irish fellow, I, um, I, I, I took off my suits entirely and I stood naked. Um, an elf, let's put it, <laughs> a little Irish gnome. I took off my suit and I stood naked and it felt wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I felt at home, I felt at peace, I felt content. I felt like this is where I had always, I knew in my inner being this is where I really was, but somehow I'd never been able to get there. Ever since I had been born into somebodyness, the somebodyness had always short shrifted who I was. As my friend pointed out, you have to go out of your mind to use your head. And that what I had been trained in was an ego structure, a conceptual structure that defined who I was and who everybody else was. And most people learn these structures, and they're like huge mind nets that come out of your head. And you walk down the street, and you're somebody. You say, you know who you are. You dress like somebody. Your face looks like somebody. Everything is somebody. Nuts. This is who I am. 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 This is who you are. This is who you are. And you, everybody is reinforcing their structure of the universe over and over again. And they meet like two huge things meeting. This is who I am. This is who you are. And they, we enter in these conspiracies. I'll make believe you are who you think you are if you make believe I am who I think I am. And we just kind of bump against each other like a huge schmooze of some big mental mind nets that keep walking down the street. And you can see them in everybody. I mean, everybody's busy being somebody. Well, so when I got out of my somebodyness, which was very cramped, I mean, it was like a prison to me. I didn't want to go back to prison. It's like you go out and you see the stars and you smell the air, and then they say, okay, chemicals wearing off, back into prison. And you don't want to go. And you say, no, no. But you go anyway. And you go back into your suit. And you feel weird again. You feel doubly weird now because you know that that isn't who you are, but you're caught in it. So that starts quite a journey. It did for me anyway. Because it, it started a journey in which my object was to get high, was to get out of my suit. It was to get out of my physical, psychological identity which felt extremely limited, limited. And I would get incredibly free and high and clear and in love. I go like I go to India and I'd sit in the temple or in meditation and I would get so high I mean, light was pouring out of my head, and, and I was some combination of the pure mind of the Buddha and the heart of the Christ, which for a Jewish boy is not bad, you know, and I was <laughs> really like... <laughs> I was really, I'd be out there, you know, and I'd come back to the States, and I'd go to visit the family. And my father would say a simple thing like, you got a job. <laughs> See, and I'd crash. See? And I'd say, can't go home, brings me down. Okay? And I began to have a whole list of things that brought me down. I mean, cities brought me down. 
money brought me down, politics brought me down. And I found myself, interestingly, of wearing a new kind of a suit. It was like, I'm very high. Don't get near me. I'm very high. Okay. Okay. And something felt wrong about it. I mean, I loved being out there in La La Land. I mean, it was, ooh, wow, phew, oh, hmm. I mean, you go out or in or up or down, there's no space, that's all phony, but you go wherever you go, that's another plane of consciousness, which is right here, actually, and, and uh, you, you look around and everybody's um, mishpacha, everybody's the family, everybody's, um, that's Sanskrit, that's all right, that's, um, <laughs> everybody's sisters or brothers, or if you go out far enough, you look and there's only one of us in drag. I mean, appearing to be many, there's only... And you really see it. You experience the oneness of things. And it's so connected and so beautiful. So that when you come back down into your separateness, the pain is incredible because you once again feel that feeling of being cut off. See, as long as you're in your thinking mind, and the, that's the major instrument for the space control mechanism that allows you to survive on earth the problem with the intellect however is that it doesn't allow you to escape from dualism that is it always thinks about something so it always takes an object so as long as you identify with your thinking mind, you are always one thought away from where the action is. You're always thinking about it or looking at it. Eh. You're always in that one thought away from life. And you experience that you are cut off by being in your mind. And there is a quality that is starving in an individual that is locked in their mind. So when you move to another plane of consciousness, which is no longer, no longer controlled by your intellect, which is really a subsystem, and you move into the metasystem, what you feel at that moment is subjectively in the universe you feel like you are the universe or you feel merged with it or you feel fully in the moment thick with the moment and that richness is so fulfilling it's interesting it just is you can be it the minute you try to know it or experience it you go back into dualism again but you can be the thickness of the moment.